Hey everyone, John here, and welcome to this episode of Dinosaur 10, the show where I count down 10 facts about your favorite dinosaurs. So far I've looked at Parasaurolophus, one of the most recognizable hadrosaurs, and Spinosaurus, the largest carnivorous dinosaur discovered so far. Today I'm going to look at the first of many Ceratopsian dinosaurs that will be on this show, Styracosaurus. I have the Schleich figure of Styracosaurus in front of us right now. Let's start the countdown and learn more about this dinosaur that's not just as big as a truck, but built like one too. Number 10. Discovery. In 1913, the first Styracosaurus fossil, which was most of its skull, was discovered by Charles Sternberg in the Dinosaur Park Formation in Alberta, Canada. In 1935, that site was revisited, and the lower jaws and most of the remaining skeleton were found. In 1915, the American Natural History Museum in New York discovered a nearly complete skeleton with a partial skull in the Dinosaur Park formation. While named as different species at the time, these remains are now known as Styracosaurus albertensis. Number 9. Naming. In 1913, Lawrence Lamb named Styracosaurus. Let's go ahead and break down this name. The first part of its name, Styrac, comes from the Styrax, which was the steel spike at the end of an ancient Greek spear. Put that together with Saurus, and you get the spiked lizard. This name is very fitting for a dinosaur that has several spikes lining its frill and a long spike protruding from its nose. Number 8. Describing Styracosaurus. There are so many Ceratopsian dinosaurs, and many of them look alike. So how do we know the dinosaur we have in front of us is really Styracosaurus and not something else? The easiest way for us to tell is to look at its head. Styracosaurus has four to six large horns lining its frill around the top. Several smaller horns line the frill as well at the sides and near the bottom. Finally, there is one large horn around two feet long protruding from Styracosaurus's head right above its nose. If you have these things, then you have Styracosaurus. Number 7. Styracosaurus Species How many species of Styracosaurus are there? Good question, because that answer has changed over the years. In 1913, when Styracosaurus was discovered, the specimen was named Styracosaurus albertensis. However, the specimen found in 1915 seemed different enough to warrant a second species, Styracosaurus parksi. However, after studying the jaws, tail vertebrae, and other notes pertaining to the Styracosaurus parksi skeleton, paleontologists now accept this skeleton not as its own species, but as another Styracosaurus albertensis. A third species was described in 1930, and was named Styracosaurus ovatus. However, when reviewing skull remains in 2010, paleontologists found that the spikes coming out of the frill were shorter and pointed inwards toward the center of the skull rather than outward. This was enough to place Styracosaurus ovatus into its own genus, Rubeosaurus. I have read about other Styracosaurus species being declared over the years, but at the end of the day, we have one species, Styracosaurus albertensis. Number 6. Styracosaurus habitat. Styracosaurus lived during the late Cretaceous period about 75 million years ago and roamed what is now North America. It shared North America with other Ceratopsian dinosaurs and hadrosaurs. A lot of North America was covered in shallow seas, so it probably had to watch out for large crocodiles like the Dinosuchus, as well as Albertosaurus, one of T. rex's ancestors. Number 5. Styracosaurus Size Ceratopsian dinosaurs come in a wide range of sizes. The smallest Ceratopsians can be about 3 feet long and weigh about 50 pounds, while the largest ones can be around 30 feet long and weigh about 12 tons. Styracosaurus is somewhere around the middle. They grow to be around 18 feet long and weigh about 3 tons. It's about as long as a car and weighs twice as much. Its larger horns are around 20 inches, nearly 2 feet each. Imagine standing next to that. Number 4. The Diet Like all other Ceratopsians, Styracosaurus was a herbivore, which means it ate plants. This dinosaur had teeth grouped in rows called batteries to slice at leaves and rip them from branches. Obviously, Styracosaurus would not be able to reach leaves that were high up in the trees, so it mostly ate food low to the ground like palms, cycads, and ferns. Of course, with its bulk, it may have been able to knock some trees over. Number 3. Styracosaurus Herds 
Paleontologists have suggested that Styracosaurus may have traveled in herds. The evidence is in the site where the American Natural History Museum in New York discovered the 1915 skeleton. This site is a bone bed, meaning that there were partial skeletons of many individual Styracosaurus here. The fact that more than one Styracosaurus was found in one spot means that they probably died together, which suggests that they probably traveled together too. Is this the only possibility? No, it's possible that maybe something else, like a water source, brought them together in a time of drought where they ultimately met their demise. However, Styracosaurus living in herds is probably the best explanation. Number 2. Styracosaurus Combat When I played with dinosaurs as a kid, I always made the horned dinosaurs like Styracosaurus and Triceratops joust with each other. I mean, it makes sense, right? Why else would they have these horns? However, newer studies on the frill and skulls of Ceratopsian dinosaurs say, while Ceratopsians like Triceratops probably did joust with each other, Styracosaurus probably didn't. Reading about it made me think twice, but if you really think about it, it's pretty easy to see Triceratops jousting, but Styracosaurus jousting seems a bit unlikely based on the position of its horns. Number 1. The Frill and Horns I know what you're thinking. John, if Styracosaurus did not use its horns and frills to fight, then what did it use them for? Well, the frill and horns probably had a lot of other uses. The large surface area on the frill could also help Styracosaurus regulate its body temperature. The frill and horns, when viewed from the front, can make Styracosaurus look a lot bigger than it actually is, which would make predators think twice before attacking it. The frill could have also had colorful patterns, and when paired with long horns, can be used by males to win over females, or to show their own health and strength. If Styracosaurus lived in herds, as the bone bed finds suggested, then the theory of it using its horns and frill for display or other social behaviors are highly possible. Well, that covers 10 facts for Styracosaurus. I hope you enjoyed this video. So, what do you think about Styracosaurus? What dinosaurs would you like to see here on Dinosaur 10? How would you like to see Dinosaur 10 presented? Be sure to come back next time and join me on Dinosaur 10 where I will be looking at Carnotaurus, as requested by Spinosaurus Rex. Leave your comments in the comments section below, rate, subscribe, and visit JonathanTheZoo.com. I'll see you at the zoo.